Hi guys and a very warm welcome back to the watercolor studio today I want to talk to you all about my growing addiction so let's roll that intro and let's see what it's all about Hi everybody and a warm welcome back. Now as I said right at the start I do have an addiction and that addiction is growing. But what is the addiction I hear you ask? Well it's simply this. It's all about pens and in particular fountain pens and other writing instruments that I need or can employ to deliver ink to paper when it comes to line and wash, ink and wash depending on how you want to uh, say it and also for simple sketches in ink. So without further ado, let's dive straight in and see what it's all about. Okay, before we go any further then, let's discuss this little addiction of mine and what I'm gonna do about it, or well, probably nothing. This is not the addiction, by the way. I only wish in some ways that it was. I have two of these uh, wrappers, these two of these, I think they're by a company called Jackson, and they are great pen holders and they contain enough space to put 12 units in that's fine if you only have 12 units i had two of these because i have watercolor brushes in one side and some uh, some gesso brushes and a few other instruments in one of them and then i had all my fountain pens through here now that would have been great and both of them fit snugly side by side one here and the other one here in my holder so i had all my equipment with me probably still many of you would turn around and say well that's just excessive man you just do not need to have that much kit with you and you'd be right you would be spot on the mark but i love these instruments i love drawing instruments i love to have them with me and to be able to choose which ones i want so hereby hangs the tail this is what i've got now <laughs> now this really is over the top but I found this on a well-known uh, site, Amazon site, and although the company do a lovely leather version of this, this is very, very cheap. It's only £15, and it contains the ability to have up to 48 units in it. And when you actually work that out, if I put that like that, if I put that on there, and then swap it over to there, it's no bigger than two of these which I've been using all the time yet it can carry twice as much stuff so this is what I've got and on one of these this one for instance I had most of this in inside of it clogged in pushed in rammed in but it was all in there not but this one I can put not only all my travel set in here additional water pens which I couldn't put in the other unit I have a lot of drawing instruments here these are all different sizes of uh, mechanical pencils, the old clutch pencils, uh, different leads. I have my matchsticks for dipping if I want to do that. I also have a small selection of brushes that I use for uh, my uh, gouache. And I have a couple of white markers and a couple of Unipin 0 .0, uh, 0.1 and 0.5 uh, permanent markers. So that's that side pretty much taken care of. And then we come to the addiction. This is the real addiction. This is what I want to sort of confess to you all. Now, this is my pen collection. And I've had a growing, uh, a growing problem for the last couple of years, I suppose. But more over recently, I have had a tremendous problem with uh, collecting of pens. Now, how did it start and why did it start? Well... For the longest time that I can remember, I wanted to sketch uh, in pen, in, in sort of waterproof inks. And I didn't know a lot about it way back. And as time, we all learn, don't we? We all sort of do things, research things and find things out and have a much better understanding. But this is one area I actually neglected because I've been an oil painter first, as most of you know, and uh, almost as long a watercolorist and ink and wash has always been something that i've done now and again and i used an awful lot of these these are the sort of what i call um sort of modern technical pens 
where they've got a prescribed steel nib of a certain size. This happens to be a 0.5. I know it's not, it's a 0.3. But these pens are finite. They will run out of ink. They contain waterproof ink, which is fantastic. And they're cheap as chips to buy. And when they run out, you just toss them away and get another one. And that's fine. But they do deliver just one size of mark prescribed by that nib so if you wanted different size you got to buy different pens as these ones will uh, demonstrate later on but I just wanted a little bit more than that so I then researched a little bit online and I came up with a company called Noodler now Noodler is an American company they do an exquisite job with their pens now one thing you've got to bear in mind with fountain pens generally all fountain pens they're not really designed to carry waterproof inks. It makes them dry, or the inks are a little drier to run. And so the feed, and the feed on a pen, just very quickly, is that little bit underneath the nib. That part there is the feed. It's normally either plastic or earlier, it would have been ebonite, which is the better one. And this is the nib. This case is a very small uh, series uh, I'm not quite sure, Series 4, I want to say, but it's a steel nib. Now, these are perfect, and they're fine, and it's what I started sketching with. Only thing with these pens is that they did not like really having waterproof ink in. And at the time, I was using an ink called Diatramentus Document Black. This is the brown version, and I use that too, and I still do. But these would be hard to get going and cause me no end of grief. So I started researching again. And I came up with somebody online who was talking about a pen by a company called Waterman. Now, I didn't know anything about Waterman at all at the time. And I don't know that much more today. But back then I knew next to nothing. Uh, other than that they had a long, long pedigree. They made uh, flexible nibs. And they were gold or gold plated or gold whatever. Uh, I think most of them are 14 karat gold. Some are 18 karat gold. And they've been making them sort of since before the uh, end of the 19th century. And all the way through, uh, I think they're still being made in France today. But the original company was founded by an American and started life in America and sort of moved all around the globe including Paris France where that part of the company later on took over the whole company and it became Noodler in France and that's it that's how it is today but anyway back to this story so I went out and I bought this one now I didn't know anything about it remember at the time I didn't know anything about pens or what I should be looking for but this was on a well-known auction site known to us all and I bought this one. I can't remember what I paid for it. I was really excited to order it and to buy it. And it's a fine example. I now know, I didn't know at the time, but it's a fine example of a Waterman pen of the day. This one is around about 1930. So it tells you how old this is and how many people's hands this has been through. But when I got it, when I unwrapped it, I felt so cheated, so disappointed. It's minuscule, it's so tiny. Now I do know now that that is a particular type of pen and had I known a lot more at the time, I may have avoided it. In a little way, I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I stayed with this pen because it has worked out to be a stunning pen. And uh, I'll tell you more of that in a little while. But when you open it up, it it's so dinky. Look at that. It, I've got small pencils that I've used that are bigger than this. I can barely hold this in my hand properly. I need to post it like that to give the length of this pen to allow me to sketch and scribble with it. It's got a beautiful flexible nib, which parts the tines part beautifully. And it's like all Watermans of the day, they're all sack fillers. They've got a lever here. And there's a bladder inside here that when you open this up and release it, it sucks up the ink into the bladder. Now, what I didn't know at the time was that these bladders, of course, I mean, bear in mind the grand age of this pen, have gone fragile. They've either disappeared or they break up into very hard little crystalline uh, bits and pieces inside the barrel. This part's the barrel. And they need replacing. Now, I had no idea.
about this at the time I just was disappointed that this pen did not function did not work I could dip it in ink and I could write for a couple of seconds or I could draw and scribble for a couple of seconds once it had run out of whatever it carried in there that was it done deal I had to dip it again and after a little while I got so so frustrated that this went into the drawer along with these <laughs> so I had still got no real fountain pen that I could play with and enjoy and that was quite a big disappointment to me. I didn't let it phase me. I didn't worry about it. Sometime afterwards, though, I really had the urge to do some more uh, line and wash, some more inks and washes. And so after a little while, I started researching again. Until that time, though, I was really using things like sticks and matchsticks like this, using dipping inks and creating uh, drawings that way. But the urge got the better of me in the end and I started looking around the market and I found these ones. These pens I bought next and these ones here and also these ones and some more of these ones that I bought. I tell you, it just gets worse, doesn't get any better. But these ones, the original ones, they weren't working too well and I sent them back to the company. They accepted them and it wasn't a problem and I didn't have any of these for some time. But anyway, back to the plot. These ones, these are steel nibbed lame pens. Now these pens are reasonable to buy, about 18 pounds each, something like that. And sometimes you can find them on an offer, but you do have to buy about five or six pounds worth of extra inside here. They come with a cartridge, which no cartridge, unless you self fill them, carries waterproof ink. These are siphons and they have to replace the area that the cartridge was in. And they work fine, but they have to be bought on top of the pen. But that's not a problem. And these pens are just stalwarts. They just keep going. They do not stop. I've never, ever had a problem with one of these Lamais. They're great pens. You do, however, have to have a number of pens because if you have, uh, they come in nib sizes. So you have to prescribe that when you buy one. E, F, F. M and B. Now the reason for that is that they are extra fine, fine, medium nib and broad nib. And I have an extra medium here. I don't know why I got the extra one, but I did. But anyway, you have to use those. And so if you want a thin line, you use the thin one, broad one for the broad one. In hindsight, I could have probably got not bothered with the F and the M and just gone with the E, F and the B. That's fine. But I can have additional color inks in some of these as well. This one here is another one I bought at the time just to try it. It's a Twisby, has a medium nib in it. And again, like these, it's a steel nib. It's a, a prescribed size, but it works beautifully. I have never, ever had a reason to complain about these pens in my um, collection. Here, I have got a pen that was a free one from this company. And that is not very expensive. It was just thrown in as an offer, but I'm actually going to, I'm using it. It's actually quite an interesting feel because you, the way it is the whole of the barrel fills with ink. So I've not really had a chance to use it, although it's a very, very fine nib and a non-flex nib. So for sketching, it's a little limited. However, I did go back and buy two more noodlers. Now these ones, like the green ones, had problems. They wouldn't flow well. And if I haven't already said it, and I will say it again, is that the inks are document inks or waterproof inks. Pens really don't like them. And these are no exception. They have a very small nib and they're a semi-flex nib. But they do work after a fashion. That's why these two are still in this uh, container because they do actually operate with a little bit of help, get encouragement to get them flowing. But once they go, they're great. And they've got one black and one brown ink in them. So I like those. The reason that all of these ones are clear is they're called demonstrators. Simply a name applied, but they are clear bodied. So you can actually see the color of the ink and the amount of ink that you have in them. It's quite a neat idea. These ones, these are two pens with a specific nib in them. They're called Food or Food A Nibs. Now, I have talked about that in another video, and I'll put a link to that up for you to uh, see and have a look at. But this is one from a company called Sailor, 
and they are Chinese and these again is Chinese this is a blue mountain or blue forest something like that from Hung Dian uh, this is an aluminium body it's quite a nice uh, weight pen really like that one and this is just a thicker bodied sailor you do have one that looks a bit like this somewhat cheaper uh, in plastic but I went for this one because it looks a little bit chunkier like a normal writing pen but they have an upturned nib if I take one out you can see exactly what they're like the nib is a steel nib and the Hung Dien's actually color their nib to the color of the pen which is quite nice but they have I don't know if you can see that if I can hold that up to the camera any sense you can just see how that nib here is bent up to 55 degrees now you can buy this as a 40 degree I believe or a 55 degree angle and they are a Chinese or Japanese calligraphy writing pen so you can rock the tip which way you like to increase or decrease the indent of the line so that's quite a nice pen and I've got two of those from two different companies again I was just trying them out I love them they're good fun so let's get on to these ones now these are the serious if you don't think I've got an addiction by now these are the real serious addiction <laughs> all right so I got this one and it didn't work I then had one from my wife uh, as a birthday present recently and it too did not work and I sort of mm, okay a little bit annoying what do I do about it well the lady who sold me this one was pretty sure that it didn't work anyway and she was quite honest about it there's no pulling the wool over my eyes I bought it at a reasonable price knowing that I'd probably have to do a restoration to it I started looking into doing that myself it is possible to do but you do need to have the right equipment and it does need to be done in such a way that you are you take a lot of care or you can really mess the whole thing up so I really didn't want to try out that restoration on what was a really special birthday present to me from my wife so I then started buying other pens and I bought three others and out of these three only this one came with a sack inside that was working so I at least have one working Waterman pen or if I didn't say these are all Waterman's pens they are type 5 nibs and type 2 nibs this one the first one I bought is a 52 and a half V what that means is it's a, a series 5 with the number 2 nib and it's a half size I believe and it's a V which means to say it's a vest pen it doesn't have a clip like these other ones so that's why that one came I just happened to get it and without knowing exactly what I was buying before here I had a much better idea because I've done a lot of research and started looking at them each of these pens date from about 1930 to about 1940 somewhere around that sort of mark and they're all made either in Britain or in Canada or America later ones that you can pick up today are made in France and that's where the company sort of gravitated to after it was taken over from the original American uh, gentleman who started the company way back before the end of the 19th century but anyway they got different nibs in the reason I collecting them is because as I said somebody suggested this online or one of these online as a great drawing implement because they have gold flexible nibs now that's what makes these special because you can you can they've got a beautiful nib that flexes and it's gold and it's just very soft it just really works very very well it's not scratchy like some of the steel nibs can be it just has its own life and energy as a pen but you do have to know that each of them are what they call sack fillers with that lever and nine out of ten times these sacks are going to need attention they're going to be worn out broken uh, they rotted away whatever inside so I'm going to sort of do a little plug here for somebody because the lady who told who sold me this one gave me the name of a gentleman down in the southwest of England I think a guy called Andy who runs a company called Andy's Pens so in desperation about a week or so back I got in touch with him and said look I've got these four pens this one's fine these four one is very special one I bought years ago 
can you do something with them? He said, send them down, no problem at all. And he not only did he turn them around inside a week, I mean, it was great. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting them for a, a couple of weeks and I had an email saying they're on their way back. So quick was that that I actually thought maybe he'd encountered a problem and thought, oh, I'm not going to touch these, you know, but he didn't. They all came back, they're all cleaned, polished, and the nibs were checked and working, and more importantly, each had a brand new um, sack or bladder inside the pen, and they just worked like a dream. Absolutely so pleased. So I'm gonna put Andy's details in, because should any of you take enough from this video to go off and buy a pen from a well-known auction site for inexpensive money i mean these are available to buy um probably let's say from about 25 to 70 pounds 60 pounds maybe a little less than that i think the most i paid was 60 and the cheapest one of these i bought was 15 and each of them all need well apart from this one all needed attention so if you're going to pay that sort of money you're going to have to probably um know that you're going to spend probably another 18 quid to get it uh, looked at and bits and pieces replaced so not a problem the other thing i would say is that the more colorful they are the more desirable they are so you could spend 100 150 pounds on something with a beautiful body not unlike something like this but it may still be a pen that needs restoration so it the these sort of plain ones the black, the brown, what have you, they're more commonplace and they're collectible at a reasonable price. And at the end of the day, if you're just sketching, drawing, then you don't need a fancy pen to hold. I know I've got them, sorry, but you don't really need a big fancy pen to hold. You just want one that actually works and delivers for you. So these are what they're all about. Okay, so let's get to the last little set here. Now, I told you just earlier that I had several of these Noodler Ahab pens in the past, and I had problems with them almost from the get-go. They did not like the ink that I was putting in them. They're a writing pen. They have a beautiful number six, uh, or size six, six millimeter, I think that means, flexible nib, still nib. And they are, to a point, they work very, very well. If you use conventional inks in them, they work probably very well. I've not tried that. But I was putting in Diatramentus document ink and although they will work, they do have a problem. They don't like getting started and they they really aren't happy with that sort of ink in them. So these ones had that problem again. The first lot I had, I'd already said, sent back and you know I sort of quite like them and I felt mm, they got a flex nib, do I give them another go or not? And I bought these three thinking, okay, let's do that. But same oh same oh, they had the same problems. Nothing against Noodler. It's just that the ink and the pen and the nib and the, the feed of the nib, just not happy about that ink. So what do I do about those three? Well, I wasn't going to send them back again. That's quite embarrassing. And I'd heard something about a company from America called FPR, Fountain Pen Revolution. Now, these two pens and i will list exactly the model numbers in the details underneath here but these two pens are from that company fountain pen revolution now i do believe if i've got my homework done right that fountain pen revolution is one guy who is just an avid fan of pens and he's created a company around his love of pens uh, where he's developed not only pen bodies but also specific nibs for the purpose of writing. Not necessarily artwork, but for writing. And he had, I sort of rang him up or emailed him and said, look, I've got this problem with these and what have you, I want a nice flex nib. And it was him who said really and truly, no pen is made for waterproof ink. None of them really like it. You can get away with it and probably the flex nibs are better at doing it if they're a good flex nib. So, cut a long story short i bought two of these now when i bought them they're about 55 and i think about 40 pounds in america uh, whatever the dollar exchange is and i ordered them to be fitted with their ultra flex nib on top of that 
because they're a number size six nib I was I bought three spare nibs to go into them now I do or I did see on another video that the nib can fit into these quite happily so I thought it's worth a gamble so I bought three spare nibs and these lovely didn't look back once these are beautiful pens from fountain pen revolution and uh, yeah I'm so happy with those when I put the nibs in here and you simply I'll just take one out and quickly show you if you take out the feed which is this section and the nib you get a piece of dry towel and carefully but firmly pull them out and don't tip the pen up because you'll end up with a pocket full of um, ink and then you simply marry up this uh, lovely nib and put them and firmly push them back into place now the thing you'll notice about this nib is it's very broad here and it's got a cut out scoop on each side uh, in the shank of the nib and it allows for that pen to spread quite nicely and what that does is it, it just a great flex pen and since I've done that since I have brought these noodlers with a new nib they work beautiful and I've got to say almost some of my favorite pens these work very very well the little caveat from anybody outside of America is that by the time you've paid all your shipping charges if you're buying under a certain threshold and if you're you've got your local taxes on top of the import these become quite expensive as I did find out by the time I paid my 20% VAT and my handling charges and something else charges I think customers just love inventing new charges that they can slap onto any imports but anyway they're made in quite expensive but I'm not unhappy I just love these pens so fountain pen revolutions if you've got these and if you've got noodle ahabs that actually need a better system then go and buy the ultra flex nib number six size from FPR and in put them in and you'll have you'll you'll be so happy you did that so that is my growing addiction now I've gone on long enough and I do apologize it has been quite a lengthy video but I did want to go through these and as you can see there's still three slots to fill I probably won't even stop there and I've actually I've filled one of them I've ordered another one just like this uh, that will be arriving tomorrow and that one does have a working bladder inside and the reason I bought that one I know it's the same it's not a different pen I'm not worried about that but I want to put some diatromentous white ink in see how that performs and it may be that I can not have to worry about these sort of modern uh, throwaway equivalents and if the diatromentous ink works in that flex pen that's a winner all right so enough of that what I'm going to do now is just do a little sketchy doodle thing because what I do love to do is have a bit of fun. I'm just going to show you a couple that I do. This paper is a printer's paper because I like to do the odd um, lino cut now and again on my press. But I have a lot of paper like this. I think it's a Fabriano. It's a tinted paper. It's not white as you can see clearly. But it really does work well. And I just love sketching. I love scribbling. And all my sketches are scribbles. And these are two that have or will be, or certainly this one, will be appearing in my new course that is just coming to fruition. I'm just finishing up now with all the written work. But all the filming has been done for that. And uh, it's all been processed. It's all been edited. And hopefully by the end of July there will be a brand new course. I'll put the details in underneath this video for you to look at. But if you want to get involved with that, there's going to be a beginner's guide to ink and wash. And I'm sure it will be very, very popular and very useful to you. So anyway, enough of all that. These are the sort of sketchy things I love to do. And in addition to that, I have bought things like the Strathmore which has got great paper in it and it's really interesting but things like this this is a lovely scene from uh, the lizard in Cornwall where this rock here got quite a well-known local name they call it the sleeping lion because it does look like a lion's head with the legs and even the fissures in the rocks if you can see a photograph of it look like whiskers so a really well aptly named piece of headland 
uh, at the lizard but others like this one a pen drawing I tried those uh, throwaway disposable pens not too sure about the white but it was an exercise a bit of fun this another one out of my head just scribbling around with the pens and using some gray ink as you can see here just to give myself a bit of aerial perspective in the whole thing and what I'm going to do for you just to close out on this video is just do a little sketch that you can enjoy and just see what I do when it comes to scribbling and this is just another one in addition to something like that and the other thing there there is this pen now this is a Stillman and Burn and it is a colored um, paper like a, a tan paper I'm not quite sure the exact color but again here I just scribble now these are scribbles that literally don't exist in real life this one you can see is clearly based on that Cornish one um, and I just scribbled it out of my head and when I get a bit of time a little bit of free time this is brown uh, diatromentis document ink in one of my in fact in two of my pens I've got one in a noodler Ahab and one in one of my waterman pens just play between the two but you can see how you can get a variety with a flexible nib you can see how you can get a variety of thicknesses of line instantly you don't have to change pens and you do not have to uh, get a food a nib out and start rocking it like this nothing stopping you just that you don't have to with a decent flex nib you can create uh, a wide variety of marks when it comes to drawing so that's what I've done there I'm now going to do a quick sketch for you on a small piece of paper just have a bit of fun and we'll close out on this video and I'm going to natural way while I talk to you I'm sure of that but I might even put a little bit of a wash on this one so what am I going to draw with well I am going to go in with a, a grey ink so I'm going to use this one because I know that's got grey in it and that's my noodler Ahab with a flex nib and I'm going to scribble see what happens anywhere you like really I'm going to do a tree which is what I love to do this this you can do anyone can do this anyone can just grab a pen doesn't have to be a fountain pen you don't have to have the same addiction as me <laughs> and I'm sure I'm not on my own with that addiction I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who um, collect fountain pens probably I guess for writing with which is their primary function but also I'm sure there are plenty out there urban sketches uh, that are sketching with these day in day out when they go about uh, taking their craft and their expertise their artistry out into the street in the real world and observe life in that fashion which is a beautiful way of doing it
so as a sketch this is quite happy to sit alongside all the other ones that I've already shown you but I just feel that it'd be nicer to put a bit of color in so I'm going to there are my gouache brushes I'm going to use some of my rounds this is a lovely round from um, Rosemary and Company they're the red dot series and so they will work fine for what we're going to do and I'm not going to do too much and it's just merely uh, a suggestion merely just to finish off this whole thing not completely dry but I think it's enough to carry on with I'm going to use some of this old paint up in the well here for my tree but I'm also going to add in a little bit of Oriolin to another color. I'm going to plant some of that on the side of the light through here. I don't really need it down in the trunk, silly boy. And a bit of that grungier, greenier color. I'm going to put a little bit of Viridian into that. A little bit of light red got in there too. I'm going to get in on the act. A little bit of that in there. Just going to come in here for some of the shadier parts. This is very, very quick. I mean, I didn't really need to do this, but I just fancied it. Why not? Lovely colors into the foreground. A little bit more yellow through here. Maybe a bit of that green in there. Just mixing it all up. Virtually cleaning my palettes with what was there. Okay, everybody, I had a lot of fun with that. Now, I know it was a long video, and if you're still with me watching this, you need a medal. Thanks ever so much for sticking with it. And I did end up with a little demonstration just to show you how I scribble and doodle with the pens and a little bit of color added just for good measure. But the real thrust of this video was to just talk about my little obsession with fountain pens, what I've got, why I've got them, and the sort of history of how I arrived at where I have with my little collection so far. And hopefully, although much of it may not be a interest you hopefully there will be a few pointers in there that should you decide to go off and buy a few of these pens whether it be the modern ones from one company or another or indeed look around on the open market for some of the vintage ones whatever it might be i really thoroughly recommend you have a go at getting some if you would like to and enjoy the process of sketching with a fountain pen using uh, the inks and what I didn't say is the inks I use are now sketch inks they are a great ink although they don't do a brown unfortunately they don't do a sepia which is a real big shame but uh, they do a black and they do the gray and other colors which don't really interest me but they are a great company uh, they use I had a lot of fun just talking about my obsession and my little bit of a problem with pen collecting and if you're still with me uh, yeah, you need a medal. Thanks ever so much for sticking with it. But I did end with a little scribble, a little doodle, and I threw a little bit of color on it at the end just for good measure. But the main thrust of this um, video this week was to talk about the pens, the fountain pens, my collection, and what I've got and why I made the decisions I did and how I arrived at that collection that I've got today. And I will collect more. But if you're thinking about getting some yourself, if whether it be from the modern versions, from some of the companies I've mentioned, or indeed looking around on the marketplaces and finding a, a Waterman's vintage one, I really, hopefully, there's something in here that will help you. Little pointers, little guides, little suggestions that might help you with those decision processes but whatever i really hope that some of you go out there and and buy a couple of pens have a bit of fun with them enjoy them and if you've already got some pens then you know exactly 
what I'm on about. But it's well worth checking them out and getting a couple and then say enjoying that process. I've never looked back. I have a lot of fun sketching and doodling, scribbling with inks on paper. Okay, so don't forget, I did mention during the course of this video that I am making or bringing to market a brand new course aimed at beginners in ink and wash. I hope that that will be launched by uh, the end of July. So keep an eye open for that. There's a lot of footage in there. There's a lot of help, a lot of information. And if you're just getting started with ink and wash, I think it will be an invaluable resource to you. So I'll let you know more when it's being launched closer to the date. But keep an eye open for it anyway. Don't forget there is my Patreon. Get involved with that. There's a couple of tiers on there. It doesn't cost much. And one of the tiers always enjoys exclusive content. On top of that, there is my other course, of course. Of course, of course. My Sky course. If you're interested in painting skies in watercolour, check that course out. The details of everything I've said are in the details underneath this and many other of my videos. So it just remains for me to say, I hope you enjoyed everything. I'm sorry it was so long, but I'll catch each and every one of you in the next video. Take care wherever you are. Stay safe. Enjoy your painting. And this time, enjoy your ink work and your sketching. Take care. Bye-bye.